so I have two questions about two questions left, at least when it comes to monetary policy, because uh, Jerome Powell was kind of like boastful in late June about how the bailouts that uh, some of these banks and companies receive cannot be used uh, for stock buybacks. But later we learned that the money can be used for something else to, again, uh, pay back uh, these investors, give them a, a nice uh, return on investment. Can you talk about that a little bit? So, so first of all, banks um, and other companies weren't using or going to use this money to buy back their stocks at this period. Part of the reason for that um, was because particularly in the banking community, they assumed that their stock was actually going to get lower and they would be able to buy it back later. So that the sort of idea that they would miss a quarter um, and the Fed was somehow a hero because of this is kind of ridiculous. They, they were willing uh, to miss that quarter anyway. And as we talked about before, they were certainly willing to miss a quarter of stock buybacks in order to relax regulations that allow them to forever take on more risk. So um, yeah, that was kind of a, a dumb thing to um, sort of say was was a heroistic type of, um, of a maneuver. Um, that said, Jerome Powell is attached to the banking community, and so it's not surprising. Um, in terms of other things that the Fed has done, they have opened the doors to buying corporate bonds. And not just um, ETFs or exchange traded funds, which are basically a way of buying into the overall market um, of corporate bonds and sort of the, that money would then just kind of lift that overall corporate bond market, which in itself is like an artificial stimulation at the top level, not the employee level of these companies. Um, but what it allows for is the companies to buy um, more of their own debt, basically by retiring it and issuing new debt um, at cheaper levels because the Fed also brought rates back to zero. So what we've seen in the past six months is a more than doubling of the amount of new debt that companies have taken on because they know that the Fed is going to buy some of it. And the fact that the Fed is going to buy some of it actually makes it look more valuable than it is because then other investors are like, well, if the Fed's buying it, we'll buy it because the Fed's buying it. And anything that has a demand you know, can potentially go up, so we'll sort of ride that. So now you have this sort of bigger ride-up bubble. The Fed has bought things recently, um, pivoting from just buying exchange-traded funds, which was how they managed to sneak into the CARES Act, the ability to even buy any kind of corporate bonds, which they never have done before, um, the ability to buy individual corporate bonds. So the way they sneaked around that sort of rule and created their own loophole was they said, you know, we won't buy any old bond. We'll buy bonds from an index of bonds that, by the way, we'll create. So we're going to look at 748 companies. We're going to call it an index of corporate bonds, and we're just going to buy individual bonds. Now, when you select 748 companies, most of the companies you're going to be buying will be proportionally to larger companies. So the Fed's basically buying things like you know, CVS, like Boeing, like Disney, like Apple, who certainly don't need the money um, in an effort to somehow prop up the corporate bond market, which also props up Wall Street because they have loans extended to these companies. And so they're more sure they'll get these loans paid back, especially if we have another round or something of a crisis um, relative to this pandemic or others. Um, and so they basically get to issue more debt for which they get fees. So all of that was a, a different way of giving back uh, to the Wall Street community, to corporations, to increase this, this debt problem um, that now will present more risk to the real economy um, than we had before this pandemic. So all they've really done is sort of grow this snowball at the top of this mountain, um, which will go more quickly down um, if things get worse. And, and it becomes just a vicious cycle, the Fed buying things they don't need to buy. I mean, go to Disney. You don't have to, like, buy Disney stock, you know, it's, it's open in, in, in parts of the country. But, but the point is, it's not their purview, but it does help banks and these companies at the top level. And it doesn't go to the employee level. Jeez. And they're not barred from um, using uh, some of this money to uh, pay dividends to their investors as well. Uh, Jerome Powell said that they're free to do that. Um, okay, so finally, what, how does this translate to uh, the average American? Like, at what point does the Fed realize, okay, we've gone too far, enough is enough? How far can they go? And finally, how is this going to impact the average American? Jerome Powell has said uh, they have no limit. Um, there, there, there's no actual legislative limit. There, there's no 
Federal Reserve Act limit, and the Federal Reserve Act has kind of been blown out of the water in terms of its you know, multiple mandates from its inception to uh, when it was reconstructed to have a dual mandate for um, helping employment levels and, and sort of price stability. They've, they've gone way past their, uh, their purview anyway. Um, so there really actually is no limit. Um, in terms of when the Fed will realize that this money is going disproportionately into the market rather than the real economy, and that might create bubbles down the road or that that could be a problem with respect to risk, um, all they would have to do is like watch, you know, CNBC, Bloomberg, pick up a newspaper and notice uh, that, you know, for example, the Nasdaq's at all time highs and the real economy um, is is struggling more than it has since the Great Depression. So. Um, I don't think there's going to be like a wake up moment that it, there's if, 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 if it hasn't happened yet, um, it's it's just not going to happen. And what that means is that um, the only thing that might happen is that some sense of stability comes to the markets and that makes the Fed sort of step off of the gas of inflating their own books and buying all these assets um, only so they can reserve that right, that ability. Um, later down the road uh, when and if it's needed. So, you know, there can be a, a temporary stoppage. Um, but even before this pandemic, we, we were at almost uh, similar levels to the height of the financial crisis on the Fed's book. And that's before they added a whole slew of other assets that they could buy. So um, you know, I, I don't I just I don't I don't see that wake up moment happening.